All right, so today I'm gonna to make a very simple gun. It shoots, it does damage, and it makes noise. So we don't have animations, cooldown, reload, stuff like that. I can do that in other videos. Most people just want a really simple gun to get started. So this one, I'm gonna shoot my alt. Boom, boom, cool, I don't wanna kill him. I'm gonna shoot from my alt so you can hear the sound roll off. Let me see. Ooh, I got him too, pretty far away. The phone is tiny. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, so I got an empty world right here, and I am not artistic, so I am gonna use somebody's mesh part. So there's no scripts, no nothing, but it is a mesh part. Somebody imported it into Blender or in from Blender or something like that. Let's go ahead and search for pistol. And we'll grab one of these. Let's try this one. And it's huge. That's cool. Somebody did bring that in from some other some other modeling software. We'll go ahead and close that. Let's find out what the front is on this. So I hit this plus sign, put a decal on there. Look at that, the front is to the left. We're gonna to have to remember that. Oh, and if you hover over it, you're gonna change where the decal is. But you can go down here to, just click on decal, to face, and then now it is on the front. Cool, so front is to the left. Let's go ahead and make this small so that we can use it. It's too big now. I'm gonna get rid of the decal because it's annoying. Get the pistol, look for size, and I want the X to be, yeah, I want this to be about 1.7 studs. Let's shrink this down, we have our scale here. And then I'm gonna get that green dot, I'm gonna hold down the shift, I'm gonna make it real small. That's like six, that's still 6.6 .6 studs. Hit F to frame in, get close. Get that dot, shift. 1.7 is good. Should we chance it? Ah, there we go. I like that. Cool. Now we need to put this into a tool in order to pick it up. Let's go to workspace, hit the plus, maybe hit a T so you can get tool to pop up. T-O maybe, there we go, tool. And the tool needs a base part, which is gonna be the pistol. We're gonna drag that in. Cool beans. And I am gonna make the handle separate because I do not wanna mess around with the tool's uh, grip, the forward, uh, grip forward, grip pause. I'm just gonna use the handle and modify that. I think it's easier. So hit the plus sign on the tool, get a part. This is gonna be my handle. All right, so a capital H handle. That And that when you go to pick up the tool, the handle is gonna determine how you're holding the tool. So I'm gonna make this really small. It doesn't need to be big. I'm gonna make this uh, 0.1 by 0.1 by 0.1. It's gonna be inside my gun. Make sure collisions are off, and let's put that handle inside our gun. So go to pistol. That's a base part, it's a mesh part, right? And then let's look for position. There we go, position. Go ahead and copy that. I'm gonna do a control C to copy. You could right click copy. And now I'm gonna to go to my handle, go to position, and do a control V to paste, hit enter, voila, there we go. Cool, I'm gonna move it a little bit more. Move, and I'll put it right about where the handle is. Now remember, when you pick something up, uh, your character is gonna hold it depending on the orientation of the handle, which I think is so much easier to move. So we need to make sure this handle and this pistol are welded together some way. I'm gonna to go to the tool, hit the plus, do a weld constraint because they're easier, uh, but they do break. So you have to be careful if you, you have explosions and stuff like that, you're gonna to have to account for the fact that weld constraints can break. So I'm gonna do this weld constraint hit the plus for the part zero, get my pistol, part one, get my handle, you could do this in any order, and that'll stick together. Let's go ahead and play it. Let's pull our, let's pull our, uh, what do you call it, spawn location a little bit closer to the gun so we don't have to go looking for it. Now don't get excited because this is gonna be, this is probably gonna be not right. Oops, if I can get it, I'm kind of a boomer here. There we go. So it is pointing, the wrong direction. It's actually pointing the right direction depending on how you're viewing your handle. What we're gonna do is orient the handle a little bit so it points forward. We need a 90 degree adjustment. 
We don't know if it's plus or minus 90 degrees. If it's minus, it'll go backwards and then you just make it a plus. Actually, because I'm guessing 90 degrees, I think I'm gonna start out with negative 90 degrees because I'm like usually always wrong on my first guess. So I'm gonna to go to my handle. I'm gonna to go to orientation and Y is the up and down. That's what we needed to change the orientation to. Here we go. I'm gonna make it a, a negative 90 degrees, right? So it's gonna be either plus, minus, plus 90 or negative 90. 50, 50, we just change it if it's going the wrong way. Oh my goodness. There we go, look at that, nice. Let's add some scripts, let's make it do damage, let's make it make noise. All right, before I do anything, I'm gonna get the bang. So let's go to our toolbox. We no longer need meshes. Let's go to audio, and I'm gonna call this like gunshot. Gun shot. Nah, that's pretty good. Insert. Cool. And I want to insert it on a base part. I think I'm going to use the pistol instead of the handle. If you put a, a noise on a base part and you're calling it server side, you're going to get the sound roll off for distance and, and you want that. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that space so I can use the dot notation when I'm accessing my sound. Otherwise, you have to do that square bracket speech quote notation, right? That's easy. The dot notation is easier. So we got our sound in there. We need a local script for our equip, equipped and unequipped and our mouse stuff. There it is. I'm gonna call that shoot. And then I need a server script too. So that's for damage, damage and sound. You want everybody to experience the damage and the sound. So go to this regular script, click that. And then we'll call this damage, but we'll do more than damage in the server script. Right, but at least it makes sense and you, you kind of know where to start. And now we need something so that the shoot can talk to the damage and vice versa. Let's hit this plus sign again, hit an R, remote event, and I'm not gonna bother renaming it because we're only gonna have one, so we won't get confused. Let's double click on shoot and start there. Shoot, all right, I'm gonna get rid of that print statement. We don't need it. And I'm gonna get a reference to the gun, script.parent. Then I'm going to get a reference to my remote event, all right? Script.parent and make sure you do wait for child because if this is in your starter pack or, or your backpack and you start your game, you're going to get an error. You have to do a wait for child, all right? Remote event. Same with like particle emitters and stuff too. And let's see. Let's go ahead and get a variable for our player. I'll just make it nil. We'll get a variable for our mouse. I'll make that nil and I need a variable for my connection from the unequipped to the activated but I'm going to make it nil right now now I'll do a function for my on on activated and when we activate we're going to go we're going to fire right the only thing I'm going to do here is get my remote event colon fire server and send my mouse dot target. And it could be nil, like we could be shooting in the air, but that's all right, we still want it to fire. And then when I equip my, my gun, I want to initialize my variable. So I'm gonna say gun equipped colon connect. I'll do an anonymous function, so there's no name, right? We'll just do the function right here in line. And then I'll say player equals game dot players so we're calling the player service and then we'll have dot local player because this is a local script so we can get the play the local player we'll get our mouse we'll say player oops player colon get mouse there we go and then i'm going to connect i'm going to get a connection that variable up here and i'm going to make that equal to gun activated colon connect on activated cool and we didn't get any extra parentheses there if you do get rid of them so now we have shooting capabilities let's go ahead and make an unequipped i'm just going to copy it and then paste it boom this is going to be unequipped there we go here i'm going to just i'll make that nil the player in the mouse you probably don't have to make nil 
But for the connection, you really do want to disconnect when he unequips because uh, connections use resources. So let's do connection disconnect and that will free up some resources. And if a lot of people have guns, it's going to make a difference. Uh, let's see. All right. I think we're good here. Let's go over to our server script, which is damage, right? And we'll get started on that. I want to get my remote event. We'll say local re script.parent. And remember, we need our wait for child for our remote event so we don't get any errors when it's in the starter pack, which goes to the backpack. And then we'll do a damage number. We're probably going to have to nerf this. Right? 20 is pretty high for a pistol. And then we'll do uh, a variable for the bang, right? The sound. Script.parent dot what do we call that gunshot where is it oh it's on the pistol isn't it script dot parent pistol uh, gunshot ah there it is i forgot there oh it's right here i could even see it anyway, anyway let's continue let's make a function called on shoot right we're going to get our player because we're going to catch this from the remote event and it's coming from a local script. So player will get sent and then we have our target, right? I believe in the shoot we sent mouse dot target, right? Where is it? Oh, here it is. Mouse dot target. There we go. So we're going to get the target, but the target could be nil. It could be shooting in the air. doesn't matter if we're shooting at something or not at something. We're still going to play the bang, right? But now let's check to see if the target is not nil. So if target exists and target dot parent exists, because if you kill somebody and their character is being removed, uh, the parent might not be there. You might run into a little bit of a problem. But if the parent is there and the target is there, we are going to look for the target's humanoid to see if it exists. It might not. It might be a tree or something, right? So target dot parent colon find first child humanoid if we find it then if hume hume will exist then we'll say hume take damage All right and then we'll have our damage Whoa, damage cool and then we gotta go ahead and get this thing going so i'm gonna get my remote event down here where's my enter button there we go re on server event right because we fired we fired the server event on the client side connect that to on shoot ah put parentheses in get rid of those two and we are done let's go ahead and try it Ooh, let's get some zombies let's go to toolbox we'll get uh models zombies here we go zombie Make sure it's far enough away. Drag that out there. Yep, I know there's two scripts. Let's go and duplicate it. We don't want to just shoot one zombie. Control D. There we go. All right, let's rock and roll. Play. Oh, I got to get the gun. I should have put it in my backpack. That's all right. Let me fumble around for it. Cool. Here comes the zombies. Cool beans. And if you guys want, next video, I'll add a flash, maybe an animation or something like that. So it pops up, uh, cool down, things like that. So I will see you in the next video.